Pokemon Legends Arceus, a phenomenal game which released in January of 2022 and was slated to be the first truly open world Pokemon game. Sword and Shield dabbled in this aspect of open world Pokemon game, with the Wild Area and the expansion released shortly after. And Scarlet and Violet were roughly another month until their reveal, so all we had was Legends Arceus. The game was based on Ancient Sinnoh and explored a side of Pokemon we had never seen up until then. The game also broke all kinds of knowledge and opened up a whole can of worms of our Paradox Pokemon work, but that's besides the point. Everybody loved this brand new take on the franchise, scoring an 83 on Metacritic and consistent 8s and 9s across the board. We all swooned for a new Legends game. Everybody started theorizing about possible follow-up games under the Legends subtitle. Legends Celebi and Kieran were often thrown around. Legends ho was another one I saw pop up a few times. And as bland as it may sound, Legends Johto and Unova were also spursed around. We were all waiting for it. New lore brought down from the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC expansion pass started to pop up. The origin of Olgrapan and its trainer, which also happened to be Kieran and Carmine's great ancestor. The evolution of Blood Moon Ursaluna, and just where the hell are Kiki's parents? As Pokemon Day nudged closer and closer, all these questions would remain unanswered. We have one final announcement, and the screen goes dark. Weird looking town. Is that Lumio City? Then the title came on screen. Pokemon Legends Z to A. This was not what I was expecting, but hell yeah! A new Pokemon game falling under the same subtitle as Arceus and was set in the Kalos region? This was amazing! Kalos hasn't been a region we've revisited for over a decade now, and it was set as a Legends game. Today I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the reveal trailer for this game. I'll be giving my analysis, thoughts, theories, and ideas for what could be the next evolution to Pokemon. First, let's dissect this reveal trailer. It starts off showing us some confidential papers containing the files regarding the new urban redevelopment plan for A City. We also see what can be presumed as a company logo, one we know that does currently not exist in modern day Pokemon. We dive deeper into the confidential files and find out that the plan is to create a vision of the coexistence between people and Pokemon, following very similar footsteps to Arceus. A sketch of the plan begins to form before rapidly morphing into a blue graphic world, flying us through the city. The camera pans out and reveals the Lumio City Tower. A large sketch of the city appears on screen, showing the final look of the city. We fade back to the document, and it reveals these plans are all made for Lumios City. We fade to the logo, Pokemon Legends Z to A, slated for a 2025 release. After a small wait, it darkens to black. A familiar sound can be heard, revealing that Mega Evolution is returning. The reveal trailer told us so much, yet so little. Due to the fact that the game falls under the Legends subtitle, theories started to run wild. Here's my interpretation of that reveal trailer. Before we continue, I'd like to shine light on a post by Nintendo of America on Twitter, stating that Pokemon Legends Z to A is entirely set within the boundaries of Lumio City. I'm sure hearing this caused some people to go. But I digress. Knowing that the game takes place fully within Lumio City, it definitely leaves a lot to theorize. A reoccurring theory I've seen has been the idea of both past and future being intertwined with the sketch drawing and the future graphic grid design as seen in the trailer. This idea doesn't immediately strike me as a possible scenario. I mean, the game's called Legends. I don't really see the possibility of diving into the future. But hey, that's why it's a theory. And that's not to say the theory doesn't have some merit to it either. The fact that the game's called Z to A can be seen as back to front, or even future to past. It's an interesting theory, that's for sure. 
However, one I more lean forward towards is the backstory and in-person experience of AZ, and the war that happened between Carlos and another region. The common belief is that the war took place between Carlos and Paldea, hinting at the Great Crater's existence and the Terra Crystals found within, and the sheer amount of not Flabebe, not Florgis, but Floet, the very same Pokemon AZ held so close to his heart. Obviously, the fact that both regions are literally physically connected is a strong hint, but that's besides the point. Also, I mean, come on, the game has ZA in the name. Switch those letters around, and boom, AZ. The only factor that makes me reconsider the war in AZ within the game's story is that Game Freak isn't too awful fond of violence in their games. But considering the professors are both canonically dead in Scarlet and Violet, and that the idea of the world crumbling due to a time travel space rift in Legends Arceus, it's pretty safe to say that the idea of war isn't overly far-fetched. Now that we have the basis of the story, let's talk about possible characters joining us. Obviously, AZ will be a rather heavily implemented character within the game, alongside characters connecting to AZ as well, his mother and brother being examples of this. Now, if we're taking the knowledge we gained from Legends Arceus, it's pretty safe to assume the characters will be descendants of present day Pokemon characters, or in Adamant's case, a new character which only gets revealed in a later game, that being parent from the Scarlet and Violet expansion. With all this being said, here's a small list of characters we could possibly see in Legends Z to A. Obviously, many characters from the original X and Y games, Clement and Barney, Callum, Serena, Trevor, Tiorno, and Shorna, Professor Sycamore, and so, so much more. As for other regions, Penny and all of her family tree, I'll touch on this family tree a little later, Kieran and Carmine, Arvin and Nimona, and all members of Team Flair, and even characters from Alola, Galar, Johto, Hoenn, and more. Now, moving back to Penny, or more specifically, Rose, this may very well just be me overthinking everything, but I can't help but connect Rose and Professor Lavington in one way or another. I mean, both are believed to originate from Galar, or at least in Lavington's case, ancient Galar. In Legends Arceus, Lavington often uses British slang and even writes his note in the same font as Galar. Oh, and they're both named after flowers. I'm not sure if that's really enough evidence to connect the two, but hey, it's something worth mentioning. Something I have refused to mention thus far has been, well, the legendary, Zygarde. The game having the letter Z in the title, and colouring it in such a way to mimic the look of Zygarde, is pretty heavy evidence that, yes, Zygarde will play a major role in the story of the game. Trailer analysis? Check. Story ideas and theories? Check. Characters? Check. All that's left to discuss are the Pokemon, and their unique forms following this game. Pokemon Variants, a new gameplay concept introduced way back in Generation 4 with the release of Sinnoh. Pokemon which have slight changes depending on their gender. Heck, you could argue Pokemon variations have existed since the beginning, with the implementation of Nidoran male and female. Though, with the introduction to Sun and Moon, a new form of variants called Regional Forms were implemented. Regional Forms have become a main staple of new Pokemon games, with Generation 9 even introducing Convergent Pokemon. These Pokemon being closely resembled to other Pokemon species, but due to the environment, they have a different appearance and use. We know that Z to A will have new Pokemon forms. I mean, hello, AZ is Floet? Legends Arceus also clarifies this, with the addition of Hisuian forms for certain Pokemon, and even special evolutions caused by the environment and items found amongst the ancient land. Interestingly enough, over the 16 Hisuian forms introduced in Arceus, none of which originate from Gen 4. You know, the region evolved from Hisui? It's hard to say what Pokemon will be getting regional forms, or even convergent evolutions for that matter. Rather than guessing what Pokemon will be getting forms, let's discuss what starters will be given. 
Now, who do I think will be the starters? Snivy, Hitplup, and Fennekin. Why these three specifically? Well, for each of their individual generations, none of them have a regional form, was used in Arceus, or have a Mega Revolution. Speaking of which, Mega Revolution. The first true game exclusive gimmick within the franchise. With the trailer revealing the return of such a gimmick, it's up for debate what will be happening. Heck, for all we know, they could just straight up replace normal regional forms with new Mega Revolutions. However, something I'm sure about is whichever starters are chosen will receive a Mega Evolution to their final form. Oh, and Charizard Z, because, you know, the Pokemon company gotta put Charizard into their game somehow. Well, with all that being said, let's talk about my thoughts for the future of Pokemon. Pokemon seems to be taking the backpedal this year, being the first year since 2016 to not have a main series game release. Besides the Mochi Mayhem epilogue for Scarlet and Violet in January, and the new trading card mobile game releasing sometime this year, it gives me hope that the Pokemon company may finally be realising that releasing a game every year shouldn't be a goal, but rather to make high quality, fully finished games which all fans love. It's safe to say that Generation 10 won't be released in 2025, or at least I have very heavy doubts about it. If that does turn out to be the case, this will be the longest gap between generations since Generation 4 and 5. I have my hopes up for Legend Z to A, and the fact that Game Freak isn't making a quick release in time for the holiday, but rather spending time to make a game which will forever hold a part in the history of Pokemon. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you all who made it to the end. Please, tell me what you think about this game below, and your takes and your theories about the game. If you enjoyed, and might consider keeping up to date with all the Legend ZA news, think about subscribing. It's quick, it's free, and it helps you keep up to date with my content. Anyways, that's going to do it from me today. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.